shining, God is smiling, and everything is all right. May that somewhere be within you. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Lord, risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
God be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, His name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Please join me in reading the psalm found in your bulletin insert. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard-pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you sustain my glory? How long will you worship God and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call, Tremble then, and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices, and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when breaking wine and oil and grease. I lie down in peace, at once I fall asleep. For only you, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. (coughs) A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Lord has given us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. 
Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides, abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. While the disciples were telling him, were telling how they had seen Jesus risen from the dead, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified, and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for ghosts do not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Then their joy, while in their joy, they were disbelieving, still wondering, he said to them, Have you seen anything here to eat? Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to, to be proclaimed and his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of our Savior.
May the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Fill in the gaps. Gaps are common in life, sometimes noticeable and other times not. There can be an obvious gap in skill sets, lack of knowledge or experience. A licensed driver is not guaranteed to be one who knows how to parallel park. Sometimes students take a gap year between high school and college and amazing things can happen during that time. Gaps in a process can be disastrous though, skipping directions in a recipe to marinate, refrigerate, and agitate could lead to something that was less desirable in the end. During Eastertide, there's an option to exclude the confession, therefore creating a gap in the liturgy. But there's a purpose for that. Filling in the gaps can bring clarity. In Acts chapter 3, Peter is addressing the people his words, you Israelites, why do you wonder about this or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made this man walk? Now, this is another instance where those people who crafted the portions to be used in the lectionary, as I see it, weren't really thinking, if anybody may wonder, who is this? Who is the man? What are they talking about? There's a gap. So here's what's in the gap. Acts 3, 2 to 10. And a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the beautiful gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at the man, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to re receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. In the name of Jesus Christ is what I give you, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and asked for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. We can't forget that part of the story. That pericope is not included in any of the three-year cycles of the lectionary. But one worth noting, this dramatic healing that has occurred by way of Peter and John after Jesus is resurrected. The people fill with wonder and amazement. So this brings us to Peter's address, the gap is filled. It is important to recall that Peter was an Israelite, a Jew. So he says, you Israelites, and the things that follow accusing them of rejecting the holy and righteous one and killing the author of life, choosing a murderer over Jesus and acting in ignorance, Peter is not speaking as a Christian. Peter is a Jew, as was Jesus, and he is speaking to fellow Jews, his own people. So this passage should not be viewed as anti-Semitic. He's talking to a few people, not indicting the entire Jewish religion. Peter speaks to those people who, and reminding them of their lineage. And because we are in a different day, I'll take the liberty to add the names of the women who are also accompany the names of the men. The God of Abraham and Sarah and Hagar, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Leah and Rachel, 
this same God glorified the servant Jesus. And it is in the name of Jesus, faith in his name, that heals the man. Peter's address to the people calls upon them to repent and turn to God to put their sins away so that they may be wiped out. Now we can only imagine that Peter himself must have done this very thing because he must have felt guilty because he denied knowing Jesus. He denied it as Jesus said he would. So he's calling the people to do as he has done. Repent and turn back to God. The reality is that what happened to Jesus was part of the greater plan that God had foretold through Jesus that he would die, he would be raised from the dead. It would have been too much like something normal to think that Jesus would have died of old age and then raised from the dead. Or that Jesus may have had a tragic accident, kicked in the head by a donkey, having a concussion, being unconscious, then dying, and then being raised from the dead. Jesus' death comes in the most public way as to terrorize the people. Jesus became one of many who were, whose bodies were placed on crosses dotting the landscape. A clear sign to people that if you get out of line, this is what's going to happen to you. If you buck the system, you'll be up on the cross. A much different way to die than of old age or due to an injury of being kicked in the head by a donkey. His resurrection, thought to be unimaginable even today. Perhaps that's why today's story of the appearance in Luke is nearly identical to the same one appointed that we heard last Sunday, but from the Gospel of John. Jesus wants his disciples to believe. He's not a ghost. He's not an apparition. He says, look at my hands, look at my side, see my feet. Touch me, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. For further proof, Jesus asks, do you have something to eat? And they give him a piece of broiled fish. And he eats it. But it must not have been tasty because it says nothing about tartar sauce <laughs> being added to it. So unimaginable is the resurrection that Jesus goes out of his way to convince his followers, yes, this is true. To this very day though, we can't really wrap our minds around what happened to Jesus except by faith, because we know of no one else who has died and been resurrected. Therefore, some still doubt but Jesus' body for others is living, living again, and it carries the scars and is able to consume food, food that the body no longer needs to live. Jesus' resurrection is not in vain. It means change is possible. New life is achievable. The scars are evidence Jesus has traveled through the valley of the shadow of death and after three days, risen to the light. He bears the scars as proof. What scars do you carry as evidence of your dark night of the soul, your encounters in the valley of the shadow of death, the visible and invisible times of life in the pit? What is a story you can tell? What have you long forgotten, tucked away? What fills the gaps in your story of life that no one knows but Jesus? Jesus bears the scars of mind, body, 
and soul. Scars that would have you sing a popular song from the last century. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth living because he lives. The scars are embedded in who you have become. Because of Jesus' resurrection, you too have overcome. Overcome the scars you live with and carry on in life. Last week, there was a lot of excitement about the lunar eclipse and being in the path of totality. I heard that here the temperatures dropped and the obvious dimness in the sky. I missed all of that because I was in Maryland and it just got kind of a little hazy. But for those who were in totality, and I talked with three of them, they spoke about it being like a spiritual experience and being able to take off the glasses for four minutes and actually safely look up and see a phenomenon that no human being is responsible for. But through God's creation of the ways in which things move in the universe, this happens. They were witnesses and they told others about how beautiful that experience in nature was. Unbelievable, but it happened and they witnessed it. Similarly, Jesus' apostles have seen him risen from the dead. Risen from the dead. And the story has been told ever since. The season of Easter is the holiest time of the year. Resurrection is not an event of the past, but a way of life. Resurrection is a lifestyle of believing and turning towards God. A lifestyle of believing, turning towards God, and continuing to tell the story. So I hope and pray that you are continuing to celebrate the season of resurrection, not having bound up everything in that first day, but carry the joy through each and every day to the day of Pentecost. Practice resurrection, tell your story, as you live by telling your story, others will have life as well. Amen. Let us renew our faith by saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.
Please join me in the prayers of the people found in your bulletin. You have no equal, God. We come before you humbled, asking for your healing presence. Heal us, raise us, so that we may serve you. We are amazed at your creative genius, how you have stretched the heavens like curtains, and yet you bend to be with us. We are amazed, God. We raise our hearts in awe. Our world and our lives are in need of healing and direction. We ask you to guide your church and heal it where it is worn out and self-centered. Direct those who lead the church, bishops, priests, and deacons, all those in positions of leadership. We ask for direction, raise our hearts to you, God. We ask you to heal the relationships between nations and neighbors. Give the leaders of the nations the courage to pursue justice and speak peace as an example for the world. We ask for healing. Raise our hearts to you, God. Many of us suffer from addiction, anxiety, and illness. Break their chains which bind them and heal them, God. Surround them with supportive people, the resources they need, and a tangible sense of your love. We ask for healing. Raise our hearts to you, God. We pray for those who have died, that they may know the fullness of your love in the life you have prepared for them. Comfort those who grieve their loss and give them the confidence of your love which knows no limits of time or space. We ask for your assurance of your love. Raise our hearts to you, God. We give thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays this week. Daniel, Peter, Carrie, and Fran. And from our parish prayer list, Bill, Barbara, Bruce, Mike, Terry, Susan, James, Sophie, Margaret, Sherry, Sandy, Peggy, John, Lee, Bill, Paul, Larry, Nelson, John, Francis Joe, Kate, John, Taylor, Carrie, John, Barbara, Dennis, and St. Mark's School in Haiti. You may add your thanksgivings and intercessions silently or loud. For an end to the war and conflict in the Middle East and other places in the world. For the safety of fellow Episcopalians in Haiti and others who are there in that country. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you. My own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you.
Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to gather always to worship. A few announcements to bring to your attention. Today is one of the ministry highlights Sunday as we journey toward the 70th anniversary. So we have Linda Caban to talk with us about Parish Retreat. Oh, and also Larry Dugan, Parish Retreat. When our daughter was four months old, that was the first, first time that we went. And now we're taking our grandchildren. So I, I hope you join us September 7th, 8th, and 9th. It'll be a wonderful time. During our vestry retreat, one of the... Um, topics was what makes St. Bart's unique and one of the things that popped up was the uh, the piece in there and in the fact that instead of just the normal hand hand keep your feet thing and and don't move as we just saw everybody moves around so a similar situation is with the retreat uh, it's a great way to meet people. There's just a joyous activity through their wine and beer even, and uh, just great company um, meetings, uh, informative discussions through their, just a great uh, aspect of community. And the two, uh, for me, were in knowing people, if, uh, it's mainly been through either four years, which we started a kickoff dinner last night and probably still can get people into groups uh, if they are desirous. The, uh, and the other is Camp Michael. It's a, the spiritual, spirituality aspect of the community up there that's gone on for since I was a boy and I look up and see at the old dining hall and see names of people I knew from 40, 50 years ago. Um, it's just, a, it's described as a thin place and, and you definitely feel that. You eat a whole lot of great food and probably too much, I always gain weight. But it's a great experience, a great community builder and if you've never been, please do join us. If you have been, come join us again. It's a great experience. Thank you, Linda and Larry. So that's the weekend after Labor Day weekend. A couple of announcements I'd like to draw to your attention. Uh, this coming Wednesday, Wednesday night dinner is at 6.30. Come and enjoy a meal from 6.30 to 7. And then if you choose to stay and watch The Chosen, you're welcome to uh, join folks in the meeting room. But at a minimum, come and have a place uh, to have a meal for half an hour and, and mingle with parishioners beyond worship. Vacation Bible School is not too early to register. It uh, begins on June 10th, the 10th through the 14th, and volunteers are needed. Volunteers needed for Vacation Bible School. You can 
contact Father Alex if you have questions. Uh, four years kicked off last night, as Larry mentioned. There are five groups. It was great. There's one group that's for restaurant folks only. And there's talk of starting another group for people who can't drive at night to have lunch during the day. And if you thought, oh, I never saw the announcement, I meant to sign up, it's not too late because Linda is here to take your information. And Juliana, and Juliana sorry, the two of them are here to take your information and plug you into a group. It's not too late. Let's see. Next Sunday, the 1030 service will be outside in the parking lot, parking lot Eucharist for Earth Day weekend. So bring a chair if you choose or a blanket for the ground. Two weeks from the day will be my last Sunday before sabbatical. So I'm gearing up for that and just mentioning it because I'm going to miss the routine of being here and no, my first sabbatical was in 2004, and at the end of that service on that morning, I was crying, and some parishioners were crying too, and I thought, this is crazy, I'm coming back. <laughs> but it just speaks to how one gets attached to the people and the community and the routine. And so I'm speaking it out loud for the first time. And you should receive a communication at the end of the week that has some details. And then on the last Sunday during adult formation, I'll present a PowerPoint slide show explaining what I'm going to be doing and the hope is what the congregation, what you all will be doing uh, during the sabbatical season. If you are visiting with us, we welcome you. Everyone's welcome to receive the sacrament of Holy Eucharist. As always, your gifts of time, talent, and money are welcome to support the ministries of the church. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, and your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. The night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. When he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he'd given thanks, he said to them, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
in the fullness of time put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. God of all, we give you thanks and praise. May Almighty God, who has redeemed you and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you. Remain with you and those you love for eternity. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.